Now, from 12 Sports, PC Hoops with Coach Kim English. Welcome to PC Hoops with Coach Kim English. Just one game for the Friars this past week, and it was a good one, pitting the top two scores in the Big East, Devin Carter and Quincy Oliveri against each other, and the Friars looking for their fifth quad win of the season. So let's head back to Cincinnati Wednesday night, PC at Xavier, a team that beat them by 20 just month, first half under 12 minutes. Uzman with the lay-in. 22-14 Xavier lead. Under seven minutes in the first now. Devin Carter make it up ground with the triple. He had 22 points. It's 28-25 Xavier. So the Friars just down three. Musketeers would hold a five-point lead at the break. Quincy Oliveri with the three. And the Musketeers were still in control. Second half. Desmond Claude the jumper. 61-54 Xavier, but the Friars turned it on late. Back-to-back -back threes capped a career game for Jaden Pierre. 17 points for him on the night. And then at the end of this one, huge block by Ticket Games in the final seconds. That closed it out. 79-75 PC the final. All you can control is giving your best shot uh, one game at a time. Uh, that's it. Uh, and if you do want to play in a dance, because it is magical, um, you know, I went to four out of four as a college player. Uh, it's 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 the best basketball tournament ever created. You know, if you want to play in it, you'll put everything else on the back burner and give all you have uh, for one game at a time. That's very much a possibility for these Friars, positioned well as the calendar flips to March later this week. Sam Knox joins me now in Sia with more. Sam. Since losing Bryce Hopkins earlier in the season, the Friars have found a way to win. A 9-7 Big East record isn't perfect by any means, but they're still in the conversation of the NCAA tournament and a berth in the dance, a testament to Coach English and the job he's done with the group. We just expect our guys to take what the game gives them. Play your hardest, play defense, the best of your ability. Uh, when you're open shooting, when you're not passing, um, no one's going to beat Bryce Hopkins. We just want our players to just play the right way. Any given night, English has full confidence in every guy on his roster. Yeah, that's the expectation. I mean, at this level and beyond, everyone that is in this program that steps on the court, they have a... Uh, a job to do and we expect them to do it one player who embodied that against xavier was Jaden pierre a season high 17 points to help boost the friars there's no limit on how good Jaden. there's no limit on the impact he can have on the game he's a very special talent now in the home stretch of the regular season the frying for their third straight ncaa tournament appearance if you do want to play in a dance because it is magical um you know, i went to four out of four as a college player. Uh, it's, 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 it's the best basketball tournament ever created. Um, you know, if you want to play in it, you'll put everything else on the back burner and give all you have uh, for one game at a time for these next four. That, that's all you can do. These last four games are pivotal for PC as they hope they can make a strong case to the dance. Like Coach said, it's magical and anything can happen. Taylor? All right, thanks, Sam. This week's trivia question is the following. When was the last time the Friars won the Big East Conference Tournament? You can send your guesses to sports at WPRI.com. The first person to get the answer right will get a prize. I'll reveal that answer at the end of the show, so stick around. Still to come on the... ...continues. Welcome back to PC Hoops with Coach Kim English. And joining us right now is the head coach himself. Coach, congratulations on a big win. Can you take us inside the locker room and what was it like in Cincinnati after that one? Yeah, it was good. It was, it was a, lot of, uh, a lot of positive emotion and excitement. Um, you know, one of our best wins in the season, you know, where we had really good and valuable contribution from everyone, every single person that stepped on the court. I don't feel like anyone you know, had a bad game and everyone, you know, everyone always, you know, uh, impacts winning, but I, I, I felt the vibe in the locker room that everyone really felt like they impacted winning. And that's important, you know, cause you know, athletes of this caliber, their performance really matters to them. And everyone doesn't play well every night. Some guys encounter struggles and hardships, uh, but you have to hold good face after a win. Uh, this was one of the, 
one of the few times this season I felt like everyone really felt like they had a, a big impact on the game. A, a theme that you mentioned, both you and Jaden post game, was that toughness was the difference down the stretch in the win for you guys. How do you maintain that as you move forward in the stretch run of the season here? Well, if you're not tough, you won't be in our program. Um, and if you're not tough, you won't win games in the Big East. Um, it's too physical, too competitive of a league. Uh, the stakes are too high, especially this time of the season. Uh, Tom Izzo has a great line. It's been the thought of a week for us a few times this season and in the preseason. Players play, tough players win. There's so many times in college basketball, young players that aren't playing a lot, you know, they'll complain to their parents or their coaches back home when they say, I want to play. I want to play. I just want to play. Um, anyone can play, you know, but tough players win. Um, guys that want to win are tough. Um, guys that are tough win. And um, you don't beat Xavier, Marquette, Creighton, Butler, St. John. So many teams in this league, Connecticut, you can't even get on the court with them. Um, Seton Hall, the best teams in this league. It's a, it's a toughness game before it gets to basketball. Simply getting the defensive rebound off the glass is tough. It's how you handle the ball, catch the ball, pass the ball to enter your offense is tough. It's how you defensive rebound, how you, how you finish at the rim is toughness. Your one-on-one -on -one defense, your post-defense is toughness. Um, it's what I love about this league. Uh, the foundation of this league, uh, the history of this league, the current status of this league. Um, toughness wins, and uh, it's what we target in recruiting is what we want to cultivate with our current group. Looking ahead now, this break that you guys have a week off in between games, is this coming at a good time for you? Yeah, you know, I think that it always is. You know, it's a time for you to sit back and prepare and watch. You know, our guys get time to bond, connect, rest up. Um, you know, recover from some some injuries and rehab, and then get ready to play one of the best teams in the country on Wednesday. And what again? But you know, as good of a venue as there is in college basketball, five star forum against you know uh, a great friend of mine and, and one of the best coaches in the country, Shaka Smart, and some of the best players on one of the best teams in the country. How difficult is it to beat a team like that twice? A team of that caliber? Yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, you know, it's difficult to beat them once. Um, you know, but it's obviously added incentive, you know, for for them, you know, to get even to right the ship like we've done in our our chances playing a team for a second time so far this season. You know, we have uh, two more opportunities uh to, you know, play a team that beat us. But uh you, you just have to be the best version of yourself. It's all you can focus on. Uh, be the most disciplined, toughest, most connected team as you can possibly be to, to give yourself a chance to play well and have a chance to win um, at such a, a, a difficult venue. And you talked after the game about March and how magical it is as a player. Obviously, you have experience from the player standpoint being there. Uh, for you to be able to kind of coach your players and guide your players through this stretch run to hopefully get to that end goal of making it to March and, and making a run in March. What's the mentality that you need to have and that you hope to impart on the guys during this critical part of the season? We talked about it a bit, just what it's like playing basketball this time. Yeah, I've, I've always, even as a player, as a, you know, coached in SLA tournament in Tulsa, coached in SLA tournament in Tennessee, those teams, um, my teams, and you know, when you get into the tournament, the conference tournament even, I just feel like the team with the most enthusiasm and energy, the team with the best focus on defense, and the team with the best focus on rebounding, I feel like come out on top. Um, and right now, it's all about our team becoming connected. Uh, so this, por this portion of the season, more than any other, and really all the others are just as important. The only thing that matters is the win. You get into some games early in the season where guys are, and it's human nature, they're looking at their stats. And sometimes it's good. Guys want to blow a team out so their other teammates, their younger teammates can play. Um, a lot of early season games, it's a lot of learning going on. But this time of the season, can you be focused on the mission 
of having more points in them at the end of the game? And can you be, be, be focused on how connected your group is? Um, but I think most importantly, learning, learning from all the lessons of November and December and January and, and putting them to good, good use now. All right, head coach Kim English, thank you so much for joining us. As you always do every week, we appreciate your time. And more of the show continues after this. PC Hoops with Coach Kim English continues. He holds the Providence record in career assist average and his 267 in a single season is a team record. Ernie D sat down with a couple current friars to talk about the art of the pass. Enjoy. What's up, Friar friends? It's me, Dev, Ernie D here, looking over some passes. And uh, we're about to check out me and Dev's alley oop. Turnover. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, on this play, uh, as soon as I got the ball, you know, I just looked up court and I seen Dev was already up there, you know, and uh, he was calling for it. And um, I really meant to throw him a chest pass, you know, but it kind of <laughs> sailed a little bit. So, luckily, it was Dev down there. And he called it and ducked it. Yeah, I contested the shot, and then uh, the person who shot contested was on the floor. And then I just took off, and I was hoping that Corey ended up seeing me. So, I was... I just kept going closer and closer to the basket, but by the time he threw it, I looked up and the rim was right there, so I just threw it down. <laughs> you seen it? Yeah, I seen it. That was one of the greatest plays I ever seen because I didn't think you could catch it and dunk it over your shoulder <laughs> like that. That was unbelievable. Yeah, they had bounce like that back in the day? I don't know, not like that. We, <laughs> we couldn't dunk like that because Jabbar came into the uh, college and they got rid of the dunk rule. Oh, wow. So nobody could dunk, but uh, that was electrifying. <laughs> I appreciate it. And now we're going to take a look at uh, some of Ernie D's passes. Jeez, that's old time. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm just doing stuff that I did every day in practice. I had a coach who let me just throw the ball any way I wanted to. So he's just run all the time, and I just flip it behind my back, and guys got open. They knew they were going to get it. Behind the back, two people. What was going through your mind for that? You know, that was in the uh, Final Four against Memphis. Oh, yeah? So it was on national TV. So when I did it, the whole place went, ah. <laughs> uh, I caught the ball, and I was going to throw it, but the defense was right there, so I had to throw it that way. But I didn't realize there were, like, players here and there. So I just was focused like you guys were just on that one target. So I didn't even look at the other players. Wow. No, that's great. How many assists do you have? About eight. But we ran all the time, you know, yeah. every yeah. single time. And we never called a play. Ever? We never called a play. Wow. We, it was uh, me and a man, we played pick and roll and, you know, run the break. If it was zone, we'd get in the gaps and just swing the ball. So it's a lot of fun when you play like that. You get yeah. a lot of shots. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. But you guys are playing great. That was a tremendous game last night. Yeah, yeah, we wow. needed a good road win. We got one. Unbelievable. Now we beat Marquette and it's all over. <laughs> then we'll beat Connecticut. You guys can beat anyone. Yeah, we play the way we played last night. We beat anybody. Great job. Appreciate it. I got a book I wrote about uh, my years with uh, Marvin Bonds and Dave Gavitt. And uh, check it out. It's in the Providence College Bookstore. Thanks, everybody. Go Friars. Still to come on the PC Hoops Coaches Show, Kevin McNamara joins the show to preview Wednesday's matchup with number seven, Marquette. PC Hoops with Coach Kim English continues. Welcome back to PC Hoops with Coach Kim English. Sam Knox here, joined by Kevin McNamara from the Kevin Mack Sports Hour on WPRO and the KevinMackSports.com. All right, K-Mac, big week for the Friars after a little bit of time off. They're taking on a ranked Marquette team. Haven't seen them in a while. What do you expect in Milwaukee on Wednesday? I know. How about that? It seems like a long time ago when the Friars got by uh, Tyler Kolek and crew way back in December. And... Hey, a difficult road game. No two ways about it. You know, Marquette, one of the very best teams in the country, uh, coming down the stretch here. They, hey, they're playing for seeding, just like the Friars are playing uh, to fight their way into the NCAA tournament. So both teams have uh, a lot to play for. It's a difficult road test for the Friars, but it's another one where, you know, if you happen to steal one, th th that win will put you in the NCAA tournament. 
Yeah, I was just about to say, four games left here. You got Marquette, you got Villanova, Georgetown, and UConn. You have to assume that a game, a win against Marquette or UConn would instantly put you in. Uh, so that would be huge for the Friars. Do you think that the time, though, between that game and December has helped the Friars, or has it not helped them in terms of how long it's been since they've seen them? Well, if you look at it, it's really, you know, it, it, it's so long ago, the Friars are just a totally different team. No Bryce Hopkins, right? And uh, this season is really, that's like a line of demarcation uh, before and after uh, Bryce's injury. And the Friars, they've certainly, they've gotten better every week since Bryce's injury. And that's certainly a reflection uh, on Coach English and his staff, and obviously the players as well, uh, with obviously the win uh, over Xavier, the latest big step uh, to keep them alive, keep them going forward and getting them ready for March. And this Marquette team has also gotten much better since we saw them at the AMP in December. What will the key for the Friars be to stop this team? Marquette is a great tempo team. When they run their offense on their terms, they're one of the very best teams in the country and a team that could go to the Final Four. Uh, and that all begins and ends with Tyra Kolek, you know, our friend from uh, from Cumberland. Yeah. Uh, he's played against the Friars so many times. He's had great success and great numbers against the Friars. I'm sure he really enjoys playing against Providence, but he's been on really good teams, you know, and, and really that's that's the mix. So to answer your question, uh, try to control the tempo and not have uh, Marquette run up and down the floor where Tyler Kolek can get, you know, 10, 12. I think he had 18 assists in one of his previous games. Yeah, transition defense will certainly be big. Jaden Pierre, what a game for him in the Friars' last win. Does that put less pressure on Devin Carter and Josh Oduro, knowing that there's another guy here that could potentially really be putting up some, some good points for them? Yeah, Sam, I'm glad you brought up Jaden. You know, he's obviously a really key player in a game against Tyler Kolak because he'll see him an awful lot. Uh, he's a vital player. A point guard in college basketball is, is as vital as any position there is. Uh, Kim English has been just a firm supporter of Jaden and his talents and his progression really since he arrived at Providence, if you think about it, when he when he beat him in that one-on-one -on -one game, right? We, we heard so much about way back in March. And he... he he kind of personifies the Friars. When he's playing just okay or struggling, the Friars are, are going to have a really tough time winning against any good team. When he's playing well, they can play with everybody in the Big East. Yeah, and then Corey Floyd a few games ago had a, had a 20 points to, to lead the Friars. So if all those guys can get on the same page, that would be big. Ticket gains is health. How important is that over the stretch here? And how important has this break been to get him back to 100%? No, good point. Uh, you think about it, you know, uh, he obviously made the huge defensive play uh, against uh, Xavier, but he did not play well offensively in that game either. I think he's still adjusting to playing with the mask. Um, I, I think that the stitches in his eye uh, had as much to do with the mask as, as anything else. They certainly uh, could have healed much better. Uh, his eye could have healed much better in this week off. So I'll be curious to see uh, where he is with the mask going forward. Uh, we've yet to see him have a, a big offensive game uh, since that uh, eye injury, we'll see how it shakes out going forward. All right. Big one against Marquette. Four games left in this season as PC looks to solidify a spot in the big dance. Kevin McNamara, as always, thank you for joining us here on PC Hoops with Coach Kim English. We will be right back after the break. PC Hoops with Coach Kim English. PC Hoops with Coach Kim English continues. Just four more games left for the Friars before the Big East tournament. It starts Wednesday night as they head to Milwaukee facing number seven Marquette. And then on Saturday afternoon, they host Villanova for a rematch. And before we go, as promised, here's the trivia answer. If you guessed 2014, you got it right. Thank you so much for joining us here on PC Hoops with Coach Kim English. And we'll see you right here again next week.